week to two weeks. And are you doing are you doing staggered Tasna? What are your what are your uh, approaches? Well, I started out doing staggered, and then I got lazy, and I just threw everything in at the beginning, and that's generally what I do. And then I started well, trying uh, uh, let's go back to staggered and let's see how that works out. I was like, I, I don't really think it makes. Okay. I, I well, okay. <laughs> I can just see people's heads I, I exploding right now. <laughs> I, okay, so I've been doing. Uh, I, I'm. I tend to be somewhat lazy, mm-hmm. uh, um, <laughs> and want to minimize the effort. So I was like, I'll, I'll just throw it all in at the beginning, and uh, it. I, I guess I would say my second mead maker of the year uh, award. Uh, sort of validates that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, mean... I was, and I was using DAP people. I'm not using any. I didn't even have Fermade K. It was all DAP. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, Hell, I didn't even use DAP for the longest time. It was generic yeast nutrient, which who knows what uh-huh. was in that, you know. So I, I really, I don't know. It. I think. I'm not trying to, uh, I think people need to, I don't know that people do fully like blind scientific assessments of these processes. And I think there's a lot of sort of, uh, less than scientific stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, you really need to do this, you know, the same thing side by side, and then you have to taste it blind and see if there's any difference. And I, I don't think that's happening. I think and it I think is some sometimes, people... but yeah, I think you're right. Sometimes? There's, well, I mean, I know okay. for a fact I, I really that there don't has know. been some side by side because I know some of the people who've actually done it. But um, I also know that there's a whole lot of talk and not a whole lot of, you know, stuff going on behind the scenes, you know. Right. A lot of, a lot of uh, chest puffed out statements, if you will. <laughs> and... <sighs> I don't know. I mean, it, I, I, I would say that, yeah, you would have to do that and then do it, do blind tastings with people and see if they could actually detect the difference, any difference. Yeah. Well, and, and I think some people are trying to just hang their hat on being unique science. and like, Oh, well, Hey, I, <laughs> yeah, well, w- without actually having done any science, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, not... yeah. Well, I think I think what that, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is it's more the concept of science than the actual science itself. That's right. Yeah. Right. And you know, I mean, I'm all for science for all that I'm really crappy at it um, personally. <laughs> but um, I'm I'm kind of with you. And AJ pointed it out earlier in the live feed that uh, that you know we were making good meads before Tosin and Stagger Nutrient Editions. You know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it just maybe took a little longer to be drinkable. Sometimes not even then, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes I think we, we start to get bogged down in, in process and lose sight of the fact that it's the final product, and sometimes it doesn't really matter too much how, how you get there. You know, if, if, if it right. works... I mean, as long as, as, yeah. long as you pitch enough yeast, enough fresh, healthy yeast, and give it enough nutrients, I I honestly don't think it matters if you throw it in all at the beginning or do a staggered. That's it, interesting. It, because I've done both, and I I you know I really haven't noticed any. Again, you know, it, what really needs to be done is that blind side by side, you know, side by side comparison and blind tasting. But you know, I, right. I haven't done that. But you know, I've done both, and I haven't noticed the meads being particularly better one way or the other yeah i, I actually remember um uh, i think it was medicine uh, uh he goes by medicine fay on the uh on the website he made a he made a lazy lazy man's bomb i think it was where he just threw everything in at the beginning and um just let it go <laughs> turned out that it was pretty good according to him i haven't tried it myself but uh, i'm i may i may just do that with all this uh some of this uh, mangrove honey I've got and see if uh, oh. 
we can make a lazy mangrove bomb. You Whatever go. you do, do it one do it a way you're familiar with and then do it the way you're you're thinking of and just have a side by side. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you yeah. really want to know for sure, um, give your wife three cups and tell her to put two cups of one and one cup of the other and mark them so that she knows what she means and see if you can pick out the different one. Right. Sounds like triangle a, test. Yeah. Triangle test. Right. I mean, they're, they're wonderful ideas. Well, yeah, we're going to be doing a triangle test at the uh, AMMA conference and okay. right. uh, teaching people how to do it. So that might be, you know, a great opportunity to say, hey, you know, if you think that, you know, one way is better than the other way, then try it both ways and then do this and see – you know, prove right. it. Yeah. <laughs> prove it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know, prove it to yourself that it's working or not. And, uh, you know, see, see what you get. And, you know, I think you're right, Steve. I think that in some cases that the, uh, uh, progress is like there for the sake of progress. If that makes sense. That we're charging forward into the future of mead, you know, and, and, and that, that doesn't necessarily mean that what we did before was bad. It's just that everybody, some people just want to, they want what's tomorrow rather than what's yesterday. Does well, some of it was bad, you know. Well, some yeah, some bad, of it was bad. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Boiling your honey for 45 minutes. Very, very bad. <laughs> I think we can and trying that. to. <laughs> trying to set it up like a like a wine must, like I used to do by adding, you know, acidity. It's oh, also yeah. bad. Acid up front. Yep, yep. No acid it, up front. Yep. Not that yeah. I think I actually had any stalled ferments from that, because I did that for years before I learned better. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily gonna stall a ferment, although it might sometimes. But you know, the other thing that, and you know, and this was funny because back when I first got started, nobody said anything about the oh, and by the way, check to see what the temperature range on the yeast is. Mm-hmm. Nobody said. We just like throw the yeast in there, shake it really, really hard, put the top on it, and wait. You know? <laughs> they didn't say and keep the temperature below sixty-eight degrees or anything like that. And I'm like, I'm like doing this in the middle of the summer in my kitchen, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And put, put it in the garage; it'll be better. Yeah. Right. Well, I live in North Carolina, so middle of summer in my kitchen, you know, the, the air conditioner is struggling to keep the house down to seventy-five, you know. But uh, and I was working at that point in time. I was working with Premier Cuvée and Montrachet, and of course the ever favorite uh, Champagne yeast, you know, because that was <laughs> very popular. Because that's what there was. That's what everybody recommended. That's what there was. Yeah, and you didn't dare use white yeast, sweet mead yeast, because it stalled dang near every single time. <laughs> no matter what you did, it would just sneer and thumb its nose at you and refuse to ferment. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think I used yeah. it exactly twice before I said never again and went back to using Premier Cuvée. Um, <laughs> and then that was before I knew about Lalaman and, 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 White, and, and, and White Labs and, you know, all of the other yeast manufacturers who were there then, but nobody was talking about them in the mead world. You know, and I didn't make beer. I didn't make wine. I made mead. Right, right. So do you think people are using more varieties of yeast these oh. days? It, it seems to me that for a while there, everybody was stuck on 71B. And... <laughs> oh, still, no. It's, like that was the... There's still a lot of people that are using a lot of 71B. But, yeah, um, the other one that you see a lot of people using, and this is more newbies than anything else, is uh, 1118. Um, because, you know, you can take that puppy to however many ridiculous amount of percentage of alcohol and um 1388 1388 being 1388 is real popular now yeah because it works good for sessions short means my go-to's become k1v because it doesn't really care if i don't have temperature control no yeah k1v just don't care about nothing it just goes nope just does its thing k1v will eat the fermenter if you let it (laughs) I can tell you that it'll eat its way through the seal on a spigot on a fermenter because it did. I don't doubt it. Are you yeah. sure it was that and not the acid from the fruit? Yeah, it might have been the raspberry <laughs> acid. It could have been, but yeah, it did look like somebody had been murdered in my kitchen, though, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> I noticed a port wine stain on the foundation is finally gone, so that's nice. Uh, <laughs> it'll make it easier when I try to sell the house. What's that? Oh, that's just the guy we murdered. His blood got through the floors and into the brick. <laughs> as long as it's yeah. not mead. It was a revenue or we killed him. He's gone now. 
Yeah. It's all right. He had it coming. He did. He was from the government, and he was not here to help, so we took care of the problem. But yeah, no. Um, I I've been playing, and I tr- I played with my last batch. I played with RC two twelve, which is AJ adroitly points out that makes a great mead. Um, but it's uh, it's really uh, it's really persnickety. It it it, it wants to be it wants to be. It's a whiny pants yeast. It's, yeah, it's a total go. whiny pants yeast. <laughs> <laughs> but can't argue with the results, though. It's worth it. <laughs> what are your favorite yeast, Steve? For you know, for what kinds of meads? Uh, I know it varies on the mead. I like um, some of the Rhone wine yeasts. Um, I'd have to look up that uh, there's uh, that you can get from more beer or more wine. Excuse me. Um, like I saw, there's the Syrah yeast, the Rhone forty six hundred, um, I C D or I V D or something two fifty four. Um, because I like Rhone wines, those like uh, jammy flavors of the, the Rhone yeah. Valley wines from France. Yeah. And so I try to use those in, in my fruit wines, and I just, I just like those, those flavors. That's a really interesting <laughs> idea because I love those jammy wines too. I never really thought of – I guess I never thought of going yeah, to I mean, you know, seven one Yeah, I would recommend that people – <laughs> Uh, 71B actually is a, a French, yeah, same region. Um, and you know, for a while I was trying to be like, oh, everybody uses 71B. I'm going to be different. It's like, so I'm, I've been sort of actually coming back to 71B. Um, there was kind of a funny story a few years ago. I was out at, uh, in Baltimore for the uh, Homebrew Con, mm-hmm. and uh, a bunch of us went over to, uh, there was a meadery out there we went over to, and uh, we Ubered over there. It was uh, me, Kurt Stock. Joe Formanak and some other people. So me, Joe, and Kurt are all mead, former, or mead makers of the year. And so we're trying the meads and, you know, we're chatting up the uh, mead maker and we're asking him questions. And I, and I said, hey, so what yeast do you use? He goes, well, it's a uh, trade secret. And I said, 71B? And he just sighed. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, come yeah. on. You know, I didn't tell him who he was talking to or anything, but it's like, come on. We, this is what, 71B is not a secret. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's everything else is a secret. That's the only one. That's well, <laughs> no, Montrachet is another one that's never a secret because you can taste Montrachet in any mead. That's every time I've had a mead that was made with it, I can go, oh, so how'd you like that Montrachet? And I get this bug eyed look like, what? Because <laughs> once you once you tasted it, you know the taste, you know, and then and then you can yeah. pick it up and other things. And, and it was just really weird because I did that in a, a tasting competition. I was at an event. And um, they handed this around, and I looked at the guy, and I said, so how'd you like working with that Montrachet? And he just looks at me, he's like, how in the hell did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and I just kind of <laughs> smiled like a cat and said, trade secret. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, the, the beer guys are really good at picking out Belgian when you use Belgian yeast to make uh, meat. Uh, when I, the, last time I, the first time I took a, a bomb, before we had settled on 1388, I think they were, there was, it was another Belgian... Uh, y Easters, or one of those that I was using, and um, like all of them, as soon as they tasted the meat, they're like, "Hey, Belgian!" It's like, "Wow, mm. you guys are good." <laughs> they were they immediately picked it up. Nice. It's incredible. Yeah, there's I, I know people who can do that with almost. Oh, Pete Bakalich is one who can do that, you know, like pretty much continuously. And I I have no proof, but I believe he's a super taster. Hmm. That this is actually a thing that people have. There are some people who have mm-hmm. like more taste buds. It's like a, it's like a genetic mutation, and they have more taste buds. Oh yeah, buds. that's true. Yeah. yeah, and they're called super tasters, and they're like highly sought right. after in the wine world because these people can detect things that normal humans can't. This is their superpower, you know. And um, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Pete is one. I've never gotten him to admit it. I don't know if he even knows, mm-hmm. but but I'm pretty sure he is because I mean I've watched the guy judge, and it's like. How in the hell do you do that? You know. No. Oh. Well, he should he should figure it out because that's a nice life. Well, right yeah. There. Well, he's he's doing yeah. You know, I mean, he does consulting for meteries and wineries, so you know, he does oh, okay, okay so with it. Right. But yeah, I mean, that's not his that's not his day job. But you know, he certainly he certainly does do that. But yeah, it's it's just wild to see somebody though who is either that experienced or 
you know, or that experience in a super taster to be able to pick that stuff out because I can pick out 